Well, hello everyone. Sorry it's been a while since my last video. I'm, uh, yes, in a hotel and um, because I'm on call, so I thought I'd make this short video uh, after so long since we've gone through the Wuhan and Alpha um, waves. We've gone through the Delta wave and we're coming down the other side of the Omicron wave now of the COVID pandemic. I wanted to make just a few comments. First of all, thank you so much for the overwhelming response I've received on uh, a number of the videos I posted, particularly the one with um, different types of filters that went uh, as viral as they say. Um, and I really wanted to address some questions that I've got. I've, I'm still getting a lot of questions about filters to use and which type of respirators to get and what are the codes for them. Look. Um, the whole intervention of using industrial respirators was an emergency measure when we did not have enough PPE and when we saw what we thought was coming out of Wuhan and what actually was happening in northern Italy and we were rightly concerned that the virus was going to be something like SARS-1 in its virulence. Thankfully it didn't turn out that way for the vast majority of people who catch it. Not to say that it hasn't been terrible for a, a large number of people, even though it is a, a minority of them. But it was an emergency measure and some questions have been coming through indicating that people still think that they are uh, the right thing to use. Now I'm, I'm wearing a piece of paper in here so you can't see a logo, so again you can't see which hospitals I work at. Some of you may Google me, and that's fine. That does not mean that just because you are stalking me that I am representing any of the places I work at. So uh, no, I'm sorry for those critics. Finding out who I am and where I work does not constitute me representing anywhere I work, nor does it constitute me representing 3M, which I've made abundantly clear. But it was an emergency measure. It was an emergency measure that was ratified by the American CDC and they published guidance on the use and the cleaning of elastomeric and silicone respirators for such emergency circumstances. But now, all of the hospitals I work at, or I would say that we have maybe six different types of N95 or PP, P2 or FFP, depending on your country, uh, disposable respirators available. Uh, we now have widespread quantitative fit testing in most facilities where they're available uh, and so we can get the right respirator for our very sized faces. Um, the efficacy of N95 respirators, disposable respirators, um, has not been called into question even though we've had you know, long discussions in the mainstream media about the efficacy or otherwise of level two surgical masks and even less so cloth masks, which are just a decoration. Uh, the efficacy of N95 disposable respirators isn't in doubt. And although the inspiratory protections offered by the industrial 3M respirators exceed the disposable respirators by an order of magnitude or more um, for the purposes of avoiding infection, the disposable respirators are just fine. And I want to make another point on the, uh, the qualities of the, of the industrial respirators we had been using. There is never any exhaust filter on those. That was only ever intended as a means of protecting doctors, nurses and other healthcare providers in the initial wave of this pandemic. Some people have 3D printed some attachments to which they attach um, they splice in some cutout sections from an N95 type respirator so they can filter their exhausted air and that's a good thing and I can't see why they wouldn't uh, be effective but they're not uh, products that were manufactured or tested or endorsed by 3M and then when we're getting to the point where you are using the industrial respirators to protect people around you as opposed to just protecting you then your regulatory bod bodies such as the FDA or the TGA in Australia do come in to relevance and they do have a role because now you're affecting or not affecting the patient population and that's something um, you know which initially when it was just for our personal protection 
it, it wasn't 100% the case that it was the TGA's business what I did or what kind of watch I wear to tell the time, or what kind of pen I use, you know, um, or what kind of glasses I use to see properly at a distance because it's all about me. But when we're considering that there's a, 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 you know, a reasonable chance that healthcare workers will be infected, uh, last July in 2021, I got Delta. I was vaccinated in um, March, and of course, as you know, the vaccine was uh, at its highest efficacy against the Wuhan and Alpha strains, much less efficacy, uh, certainly against transmission for the Delta, uh, although it maintained its efficacy in um, reducing the prevalence of, um, of severe illness, as it does maintain the, the effect, efficacy in in uh, preventing severe illness with Omicron. And of course, much less is the case with transmission as we know. But it, th that was all about uh, all about our own personal protection. Um, it's not the case anymore. So I am thankful for the response I got and for those countries around the world, because I've had responses from all continents. I've appeared in webinars for Turkish dentists in using these respirators. I've been uh, humbled by the response and the gratitude I've received. But for those countries who don't have the um, uh, disposable PPE, then they, these may still be an option. For me, I use mine if I'm doing any sanding or I use the other one, the full face one, if I'm spraying pesticides in my garden with the, uh, with the appropriate filter, not the one that we use for, for particles. And I would suggest you do likewise. I think, and the reason I decided to make this video is because I received an email from somebody wanting to set up a whole protocol for full face respirators, the 6800 series, in in a hospital in my state, where they have disposable PPE, and it's just not necessary anymore. So again, thank you, and uh, good luck in all your travails. Hopefully, we're on the downward phase of this. Hopefully, it will just be the fifth coronavirus that causes colds and uh, I think we can hopefully see that transition from pandemic to epidemic to endemic um, as we get through this this difficult time in our social history in our history social history okay thanks a lot and uh, who knows where we'll go with this video channel in future bye bye